Hola, hola, hola a todos los que se van conectando. Próximamente en un minutico vamos a estar con nuestro invitado de hoy, Evan Carmichael. Es una persona que ha logrado muchísimas vainas en su vida. Tiene uno de los canales de YouTube más importantes que hay hoy en día disponibles en YouTube sobre desarrollo personal. Entonces, mientras vamos esperando que él llegue, por favor pongan cualquier pregunta que les interese saber de él. A ver. Y, y bueno, si logramos, si lo logramos, eh, de pronto hasta alcanzamos a, a solucionarlas. Tengo varias preguntas ya programadas, pero cualquier otra bienvenida. paciencia listo ya se está conectando Evan la entrevista va a ser en inglés después la vamos a traducir a español Evan TV it's happening <laughs> how are you how are you we're so we're, we're so grateful for you to be here at this interview I, I love it man I'm, I'm uh, thanks for having me we're, we're gonna... Uh, I'm gonna try to do my best my English is a little rusty so please bear with me I think hey, I'll get through it. Your English is way better than my Spanish, so. <laughs> great, great. I'm and ready. So I already did the the killer intro, uh, telling all all uh, every person that uh, about all your achievements, everything you've made, so that we can get right to the questions. Let's go. I love it. All right. So uh, I wanna first talk about your your new book, Built to Serve. Uh, I over already read it. I was literally. Um, crying like 10 minutes in, which is really rare for me. So it really helped me. And uh, there's a topic in this book that you mentioned, which is finding your purpose. And you have a really different approach than most people about finding the purpose. And you say you have to find it through your pain. So could you maybe elaborate a little bit about that uh, so that everybody knows why that's uh, important and how to, how to do it? Yeah. So again, thanks for having me on. Um, what are the number one questions I get asked from people from around the world? I mean, I, I live in Canada, uh, but people from around the world in, in all sorts of broken English keep asking me like the same question, which is how do I find my purpose? How do I find my passion? Uh, I'm, I'm, I know that I can do more, but I'm frustrated that I don't know what, what to do. I don't know how to live, I don't know what to create. And so finding your purpose is not actually a, a super difficult process. You don't have to go sit on a mountain for 10 years and journal and meditate and all of that. It's, a, it's an easy process. Your purpose comes from your pain. And in the book, I go through a, a three-step process, who, why, how. But the, the easy version of it is everybody watching, you, me, all of us, we've been through struggle. We've been through pain. Uh, we've grown. We're, we're a lot better than we used to be. But we've been through something. Your purpose is to help other people who are right now, today, who you used to be. So if you think about the most painful moment in your life, there's lots of people. And, and painful moment, just more emotional pain. Not, not like you broke your finger or something. But when you felt, when did you feel worthless as a, as a human? And there's lots of people right now who are struggling with the very same thing that you struggled through. And your purpose is to help them not struggle as much. What, why did you get so emotional at the start of the book? Uh, well, I was in the, in the part where um, you said, like, think about the most painful situation you've ever had in your life. And uh, think what, about how you felt, why, why it happened, and how could you help somebody else maybe have an easier time when they're in that same kind of pain. So, so what was it for you? Uh, it was a moment where, uh, well, I got, I lost all my friends. I was in school. I was uh, probably in, in 
sixth grade, which is seven, I think, in Canada. And uh, I lost all my friends. I felt alone. My parents got a little distant from me. And so I remember being on an airplane um, alone, coming back from a trip, and just feeling really, really sad, really depressed. Like, I felt like it was the whole world. And, and th that's my go-to image uh, every time when I, when I think about, like, my, my most painful moment. And so what did you come up with as your who, as your, your core value? So my who is, um, um, how do you say it? Um, intentionality. Okay. Intentionality. Like, always live life with intention. Even if you screw up, do everything wrong, at least you were intentional about it and you're not letting life just pass you through. Uh, if I fail, I'd rather fail by doing than by not doing. So for me, that's really important. Yeah, and I think even just the, you know, the fact that you felt alone and you weren't, you lost your friends and your parents weren't talking to you or you felt distant, helping other people not feel so alone is going to exactly. be, is going to make you feel great. Exactly. Um, and listen, everybody feels good about that, but especially for you. If, if somebody comes to you, whether it's, a video that maybe they watch of yours, an Instagram post, a live stream, or a face-to-face -face conversation. And afterwards, they say, Diago, thank you for helping me not feel so alone. That's going to... That's right. That's, that will, that's, that's what most the whole thing. Me. Yeah. And, and yeah. That, that will never get old. Like, you'll be 95 years old, and you'll still love helping people not feel like they're alone. Exactly. And your one word is belief. We have it right here. Cre, cre, how do you say it in Spanish? Cre. 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 Did I get it? Cre. 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 Would be the right. short version. And so I, I really like it. I like it very much. And even though everybody has their own who, and it's important for them to figure that out, I think your who is very uh, important to everybody. Like believing yourself, like uh, just, just go for it. And so... Um, could you help us a little bit maybe in, in your experience, like what are some things we can start doing to start believing more in ourselves? So there's two things. If, if you want more self-belief and it, I think the biggest problem in the world is that people don't believe in themselves enough. I think everybody has what I call Michael Jordan level genius at something. Uh, maybe Michael Jordan isn't the, the best example in the, in the Spanish world, but no, we know um, him. We know him. But who, who's the greatest athlete? Who do you think is the greatest Spanish athlete or Latino athlete of all time? Who would you go with? Uh, I'm not really that into sports, but here in Colombia, we have El Pibe, which was a football but, player. How, how about Valderrama? Carlos Valderrama. I, you know more about Colombian soccer than me. All or right, Colombian okay. sports. I, I'm pretty sure Carlos Valderrama is, is, uh, is Colombian. Anyway, um, you know, the, the, the Pele of, of, you know, everybody's the Pele of something if we're going South America. Yeah. You know, like, you're, you're the greatest in the world of something. The problem is you don't believe that you are. And so you don't go off and do great things. And so how do you get that belief? Well, there's two ways. One is you start to be around the people who make you feel better about yourself. So there's some people when you are around them, uh, it, it takes away your energy. When you leave them, you feel worse. You feel low energy. You feel like it's been sapped. You feel defeated, right? You feel low pressure. Uh, somebody's saying, yes, he is. Carlos Valderrama, Colombian soccer, <laughs> football. Yeah. Colombian football. Um, I think he's the only Colombian person I can think of in, in El football. El Pide is a big one. Like, I remember El Pide, he had, like, uh, blonde. Uh, like, yeah, that's uh, him. That's Carlos here. Valderrama. Oh, yeah. Oh, so I was just uh, thinking of his, uh, like, alias. That's just, I got to look him up. If we're thinking about the same person, this, this is worth it. This is worth it, guys. Carlos? Yeah. I'm going to lose so many followers because of my ignorance in soccer. Come on. Car yeah, that's him. That's him. Right, there you go. Carlos Valderrama. Can you see the top? There you go. Okay, yeah. so we're both right. The same, I didn't know his name was El, El Pire. Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's like his uh, artistic name. Okay, there we go. Okay, so everybody is El Pire at something. There we go. Uh, okay, so how do you get that belief? Well, one, 
you have to be around the people that make you feel better about yourself. And, and maybe that's people in your life. But if you don't have anybody in your life, life who makes you feel good about yourself, then, then you, you read books and you watch videos. And, you know, you may, ne you may never meet Diago. Like, maybe you never meet him. But you can learn from him. You can right. use his content. Like, all the Diago stuff is going to make you feel better. There's no Diago post that says, you suck. Quit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Probably not, I think. Right? I hope not. No. <laughs> you know, yeah. I haven't seen it at least. I don't understand <laughs> the Spanish part, but it all looks, you know, positive and aspirational. Um, so that's good because people need more Diago in their life. People need more Evan Carmichael or whoever it is for you, right? So you, we have a lot of negative people and a lot of negative voices in our, in our life. We need to yes. minimize those and then put in the positive ones. So if it's, if it's IGTV or if it's YouTube or if it's podcasting or if it's books, you start putting in the things where after you spend time with it, you feel better about yourself. So, so that's step number one. The second thing you can do is you start teaching yourself that you do difficult things. Just watching stuff is not enough to build the belief. You have to take action. You got to do it. So even at the start of this, where you, where you were saying, hey, uh, you know, my English may not be perfect. Uh, first off, it's great. I understand, you know, everything you're thank saying. You, thank um, you. Except you don't, you don't, you, you know English, but you don't know Carlos Valderrama. So we have to. We yeah, have to yeah. That. That's, that's my fault. <laughs> um, but a lot of people would say, I'm, I don't know, I don't speak English well enough. I'm from Colombia. I'm not going to reach out to somebody and ask them to do an interview in English. Right? A lot of people would, would feel that way. You said, well, I'm going to try. And maybe he says yes, and maybe he says no, but I won't know until I do it. And, and that's the difference. That builds a little more belief. The first time is scary. You teach yourself that you do scary things. And then it becomes less scary. And in the doing of the scary thing, you gain a little more belief in yourself. So if you were nervous coming into this about your English, and then we have a great talk, at the end of it, you feel a little bit better about yourself and your English and, and doing it. And, and that's constant, right? Um, today on my IG Live, just earlier today, I had Peter Malouk on, who he's, um, he, he wrote this book with Tony Robbins. Uh, he's Tony Robbins' business partner. He, he manages $55 billion in assets. $55 billion. It's crazy. Um, and I had him on my show, and I was nervous going in. Of course. I don't manage anywhere close to that. You know, and, <laughs> and he's so, we're talking about the stock market and investing, and he knows like way more than I do about any of that stuff. And so my heart's going like boom, 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 boom before I go live. But I did it and it was great. And he was super nice. And that, that conversation builds my belief in the next time I have to have a different conversation. So it's one, surrounding yourself with the people, the ideas, the, the, the videos that make you feel better about yourself. And then doing the thing that you're afraid to do and not letting the excuses take over. Because a lot of people would say, just to your point, well, I don't speak English fluently, so I can't do it. Yeah, of course. And so what are the, what are some of the best advice that you've received uh, from like non speakers, non gurus, non writers, just uh, maybe family, friends, some of the things that really impacted your life? Yeah, so I'll show you on my wall. This is me when I'm eight, eight or nine years old. And those are my parents above me. And I've got five pictures on my wall here. And they're in the middle because they would always tell me that I'm Evan Castrilli Carmichael and that I could do anything that I believe that I can. And that picture is just a reminder for me every day of, of that message in my, in my ear. And they, they're not great entrepreneurs. They're not, you know, business people really. Uh, but, they gave me the most important lesson of all that then I bring into my business and everything that I do. And how did you know, like, when did you know you wanted to be an entrepreneur and then after to be a, 
a social media like channel? So I, you know, growing up, I, I had a lot of entrepreneurial businesses. I sold baseball cards. I did garage selling. I had a bunch of little businesses always kind of on the side. But when I was, so I'm 40 right now. When I was growing up, entrepreneurship wasn't a, a path. Like nobody, you had to be crazy to be an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur basically meant that you couldn't have a job. So I didn't know anybody who was an entrepreneur. Uh, so I thought I wanted to be a banker. And it wasn't until I went to university that I connected with two entrepreneurs and joined their business and became a 30% owner in the company. That, that was my first real business. And I didn't know if it was going to work. I thought actually it probably wasn't going to work, but I wanted to, I'd rather know and fail than not know. You know, I'd rather see it through and say, well, at least I tried than to have my whole life thinking, I wish I had tried. Um, and now that business ended up working out. Uh, it was really hard. I quit on it once, but I still made it work. And then in terms of going to social media, I am a <clears throat> visual learner. So I like seeing stuff. I like, I like that I can see you. If I couldn't see you, if this was only a podcast, I'd have to, I'd have to really focus because audio is the worst for me. So yeah. I just wanted more video content on YouTube to help entrepreneurs because I, I, was, I was making content for me. Like I, even now, I need more belief. I need more belief. Well, so just I mean, so you know, uh, I started uh, my own channel. Like hey, hey, probably, nice. probably fifty percent of my inspiration was from your channel. I actually cool. wanted to start something uh, similar to what you do, but it it, it just it took so much uh, research, so much uh, you know knowledge about personal development that I was um, still starting out. So I didn't feel I had the capacity, and I ended up doing the interviews, but. You were a great motivation for me to start my channel because I said, well, we need more in, in Spanish and maybe relative to Colombia. But I know you also have Evan Carmichael in Spanish, which you double. Yeah. And... I got it. I got the, we have, it's smaller. It's like half a million, but let's see where is this? No, that's right. Yeah, I saw it. This it's... one here. Yeah. Evan on Esp in Espanol. <laughs> yeah. So. So I just want everybody to know that they can find you also in Spanish. You do a great job. That, that must be really difficult to double your videos in Spanish. So thank you also for that. And um, well, now I would like to ask you about um, social media. Okay. Uh, I saw in, in your uh, Jordan Belfort interview that I always thought like uh, he, he's really good at the art of creating content. But on that interview, I realized you're also really good at the science of, of social media and like paid advertising and the, like the really technical stuff. So my question is, if you had to start all over, uh, like if you were just gonna start today, uh, your new YouTube channel, you had very small budget, uh, how would you go on doing that? I would do almost everything the same that I'm doing now, just do it myself which is how I still started. I did everything myself. I would, I would worry less about the editing. Um, at the beginning, I was worried about the editing and how good it looks. Um, and for the most part, you're training the wrong skill. You know, like if, if, you, if you wanna be a speaker, if you wanna be in front of the camera, if you wanna get known for that, and you spend, if you're gonna make a video and you spend 20 minutes recording the video, a lot of times people will then spend five hours editing the video. So you spend 20 minutes recording it and five hours editing it. You're training the wrong skill. Okay. You're training yourself how to be a good editor, not how to be a good speaker. And, and I did this too. I did this at the beginning. I edited all my videos and I realized that I wasn't good at it and I didn't want to get good at it. It doesn't make me happy to edit videos. And it's my time is better spent working on being a better speaker. Of course. With having very little editing, just a beginning and ending or, or nothing, just go record. Like I would, I would take my phone. I still do this now. I mean, I'll take my phone, just flip it horizontal and just start recording. 
because when you get to go on stage or when you get to go, when you go on Jordan Belfort's podcast, there's no, there's no redos, you know, like you, you get one shot and you go and you do it. And a lot of people are training themselves to only be good speaking wise when it's massively edited. Of course. But when you go on a show where you go on stage or you do a live interview like this, there's no editing. So you yeah. have to be good. What's done is done. Yeah. So that's why you need to train the right skill. So I would spend five hours, if I had to do it all over again, I would spend those five hours recording the video and 20 minutes editing it instead of the other way around. And uh, are there any like strategies, like quick tips that um, we all can start doing by ourselves? Like important things you, you see a lot of entrepreneurs doing on their channels uh, that maybe we can fix. Talk to the person who you used to be. So the best videos for you are the ones where you're talking to the you from five years ago, from 10 years ago. Like imagine you could sit down, if, if you have that memory of the seven-year-old Diago and, and feeling lonely and, and isolated, and then fast forward to like 17-year-old Diago and when did you feel lonely and isolated, go talk to him. Make a video for 17-year-old Diago. Okay. What would you say? How would you say it? And what you've become is impossible. Like 17-year-old Diago would look at you right now and say, that's not, there's no way. That's not possible. He's not going to be doing interviews. He's not going to be doing all this stuff in English. He's not going to be building an Instagram following. Like it feels impossible. But you've done it. You're here. So you represent hope. You represent inspiration in a way that, 17-year-old Diago doesn't want to listen to Evan Carmichael, doesn't want to listen to Tony Robbins, like doesn't want to listen to Steve Jobs, but he'll listen to you because you know what he's actually been through. And so the best content you can make is, is content for the younger version of you and try to, I would picture my, I would close my eyes, I would try to focus, try to find a younger version of you, try to remember a moment on an airplane, sitting at home, like whatever, like pick that moment and then make a video that speaks to that Diago. Great. Uh, is there any uh, also specific uh, advice you can give us on entrepreneurship? I know you have the biggest salsa studio in, in Canada. You have a lot of experience with venture capital. So what are some advice that, uh, that you could tell us like young entrepreneur, first time, uh, gonna that that he's gonna try out in, in business so maybe what to do what to avoid for that new entrepreneur i would say one start um a lot of people just sit on their ideas for too long you sit on it for too long so you know before you messaged me for this interview how how long did you think about it before you messaged me uh, actually, I, I messaged like 50 people that day. Yeah. Uh, you were, I think, the only person that replied. Okay, great. Of those 50 people. And so that idea to find 50 people, how long were you thinking about it before you did it? No, I just did it. I do it every day. I love it. A lot of people wait too long. A lot of people, they get an idea, I'm going to wait. I'm going to get 50 people. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm inspired by Diago. I'm going to write to 50 people. But they take months, years before they do anything about it. So that's problem number one. You, you get an idea, you just do it. Get started. And I'm pumped that I'm the only one out of the 50 who said yes. You know, I mean, it, it goes a little, I bit of believe hope, it. a little bit of hope and a little bit of motivation and encouragement. Uh, to keep going because a lot of people then when you do it, the next step is to not quit, you know? So step one is, is get started. And step two is don't quit. You got to keep doing it. A lot of people, if they didn't get a response on their first 50. They would say, okay, I guess, I guess it doesn't work. I guess I should stop. Right. No, um, so that's the biggest difference. Like it's not about, it's not about how smart you are. It's not about how many resources you have. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of your heroes, the people watching, like a lot of your heroes, they've done a lot more with a lot less than what you currently have right now. The only difference is they started and they didn't quit. Great advice. So Evan, I wanna respect your time. I know you 
you have a busy schedule. So uh, could you tell uh, our, all our viewers, where can they find you? Uh, Evan Carmichael, you know, pretty much everywhere. If you want the book, you can get it on Amazon. Or uh, if you want a signed copy, you can get it from my website. <laughs> Although we don't, you can't get a signed copy to South America. It's only Canada, the US. Um, but otherwise, you can get it on Amazon or the Audible version on, on, on Audible. Um, and I'm Evan Carmichael, everywhere else. And uh, okay. and so we, need on, we need to do a video on Carlos Valderrama. Show some Colombian love. Yeah, well, he's dead, but wait, no. Did he, he's did he die? People are going to murder me for saying he's dead. Well, well he's, he's, he's still dead. alive. He's still, I just, I hate soccer. Like, I don't know anything about soccer. You're, uh, okay. But I, I just want to... I, I need there, to see if he's alive now. Let's see. We're going to go. Yeah, he's up. alive. Okay. He's alive. <laughs> this man, he's saying is dead. No, no, he's not alive. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's alive, 59 years old. He's not even that old. 59 years old, was born in Santa Marta, Colombia. Right. Yeah, that, that is so embarrassing. I'm going to edit really that bad. out. That's really bad. Yeah, <laughs> that's really bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I also want everybody to know, like, if you get the Audible version, Audible, like, uh, audiobooks are the greatest life hack, I think, for consuming information. And I really loved it because you narrate it yourself. So you don't just get the info, but you get the energy. So I think that's really important. And anybody can buy it right now. Like they don't even have to wait for, for the book to get here to Colombia. And, and if they want a physical, then just Amazon will. will I already checked. I have the Audible version. Cool. So um, Evan, thank you again so much for being here. We really, really appreciate you taking your time to do this interview for uh, like a Colombian and Latin um, audience, it really, really means uh, the world to us. I'm happy to help, man. And listen, now the hack is look at who's following me on Instagram. Look who follows me. And then if there's anybody in there that you like, you, you can message them and say, hey, I just had Evan Carmichael on. Will you come okay. on? Okay. Like use my name to get other people now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a and, great and, idea. And my name means nothing to uh, many people, but it'll mean something to the people who follow me. And so this can be like the start to get some yeah, people on your that's, show. That's a great tip. I'm going to write Tony Robbins right now, saying if sure he'll be on my show. Because uh, I know he... Tony follow me? I think he might. I, he I would probably like, does. I would look at someone, I would look at like David Meltzer, Anthony Trucks, um, people who like, they're doing a lot of IGTV stuff. And they'll probably say yes. And then if you have people who follow me and Dave Meltzer and Anthony Trucks, like, oh, he's had all of these people on? Okay, I'll say yes, too. Oh, that's a great tip. Thank you so much for that. So, man. Evan, so thanks again. Uh, I hope I'll see you someday in the future. And, and again, thank you so much for your time. Awesome. Thank you, Diego. Good luck, man. Bye. Bye, man. Bye.